Now we're getting responses, yeah. Wednesday was a little humdrum. <laughs> it was kind of like Monday for us, wasn't it? All right. So, is Kyle Yaki here? Looking for this? <laughs> But that means you're registered, because I knew it was you, see? <laughs> All right, there's another announcement I wanted to make. What was that? So, some of you hopefully have noticed that you have two open homework assignments at the moment. Um, uh, homework three on chapter three, you've been working on, most of you. That'll be due uh, Sunday night. At mid, just before midnight, like the other ones were. I default to that when we can. However, here's an exception. Are you listening? Uh, the homework for uh, chapter 4 and 5 that we're going to start today and finish next week will not be due the following Sunday night, like you'd expect. Because we have an exam coming up. After I get through chapter 5, we'll uh, have an exam on this stuff. I'm uh, more of a supporter of don't wait until you've covered 20 chapters to have an exam because that's just overload. So I like to have them a little more often, and that way if you bomb one, it's not as critical. So it's all on the calendar and web assigned, but let's see. The test will then be February 2nd, but it falls on a Monday. On a Monday. So I could, I could have that homework due on Sunday, but that would be the night before. All you'd have is Monday morning to look at the answers and study and prepare. And I wouldn't like that as a student. Thus, uh, the, your next homework's due this Sunday. The next homework will be due the following Friday in a week. So I've opened it up to you now so you can start, especially since we're starting the topics today. Does that all make sense? Again, through five. Yeah. Yeah, as listed on the schedule, both those information, if you forget, the date, Fe Monday, February 2nd, covering chapters one through five, will be our first exam. So the, home, the homework on those last two chapters, chapter four and five, which will be homework number four, will be due the Friday before that exam, not the Sunday. The first one, it, Seems to throw students off, so I'm warning you early. <laughs> but you can start it now. Get as far as you can. We obviously haven't covered the topics yet. That's what we're starting. Make more sense now? Questions, concerns? Okie doke. Groovy. All right, I can see that most of you have uh, registered your clickers. But there's still a handful of you that have not. The two I'm mostly concerned about is, uh, look at your device, because I know you don't have this memorized. I have two that are unassigned. In other words, Mon Wednesday when we did this, two people were answering, but they haven't been registered yet. And maybe you think you have. Uh, you know what, it'll be easier if I just write them. If either of those device ID numbers is yours, let me know. Best to just email me with your name and that that's your ID number. Then I said you were unassigned, and I can hook you up. <laughs> is that anybody here? Bummer. <laughs> yeah, I figure you might have to go look it up, too, so especially if you're responseware and it's in your email. So, Okay. Now, back to the physics. So, let's see. We learned that velocity is distance over time. It's the rate at which you're changing your, your position. And we learned that acceleration is the rate at which you change your velocity. 
guess, you know, we can be consistent here. These, those are all intervals, changes in those. So you, you have it a position, and if you move that position, the rate at how you change that position is your velocity. The rate that you change your velocity is your acceleration. I hope you guys, if it's confusing to you, think about these sometime outside of class. You know, usually about 50% of the students get confused between these two. We're used to dealing with this one, velocity, but when we throw in acceleration, they, you know, they often intermix them and get confused which is representing what. And if you can just keep those straight, it'll uh, help you with a lot of the physics going forward. For example, if you're tooling down the road, you know my example, at 55 miles an hour, constant speed, what's your acceleration? I heard you. I was just giving more people a chance to comment. Zero. You know that automatically. And so some of the homework or test or in real life, you, you know that, hey, if I'm not changing my velocity, there's no net acceleration. And vice versa. If we say the acceleration is zero, then you automatically know about the velocity. What if the acceleration is constant? That means the acceleration is not changing. Example, gravity. Gravity doesn't change, right, for practical purposes. It's 10 meters per second per second. If that's constant, what's the velocity doing? Anything you know about what it's doing. It, it, it's increasing. It could also be decreasing, and so more generally we would say it is changing. You know it's changing, it's not fixed. It's going to start at something and end at something else. Common sense, I'm just trying to reiterate it because you usually don't, you're not used to thinking like this, for <laughs> most of you. Okay, we also had, you can uh, rearrange this one. Algebraically, that's the same thing. And we wrote it, I wrote it as the final velocity is the initial velocity, whatever you started out as, plus this change, this change in velocity. That'll either add or subtract to your original. And that gives you where you end up. So those equations can help you when you need to actually calculate stuff. There's one more I want to get to. And that's where we left off at the end of the last class. So I have a demonstration to build up to this one. Here's a toy. I love when toys can help demonstrate physics. We got fancy equipment, and I got simple equipment. But I always like when it's more like string and sticky tape, duct tape, things you can find around the house to show the same thing. Anyway, a toy car. Battery powered. Wheels turn. I want you to guess. I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to let it go, and I'm going to mark off its position as it changes with time. I'm going to attempt to do it at equal time intervals. You know, the very technical way of 1001, 1002, 1003. So in equal time intervals, I'm going to put, mark its position. Predict. How, what do you think it'll look like? How do you think? where I place these, their position relative to each other. What do you, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah? OK, closer together at the beginning, and then they get further apart for each time interval. And then even out again? OK, good. What else? Or does everybody agree? Give me more. Okay, closer, the, the, the positions will be closer at the ends, but spread out in the middle. So mostly agree. Okay. Batteries only. Evenly spaced. Okay. Let, let's take these two. Those that where it changes its relative spacing. What would that tell you about its velocity and or acceleration? 
What, what's, what's changing? The velocity or the acceleration? I know you haven't seen it yet, so. But it would imply something's changing. I, I, who thinks it'd be the velocity as opposed to the acceleration? Four, five of you. Who, who thinks the acceleration would be changing? More of you. All right. Have you th given yours thought where they wouldn't be changing their relative position? What would that tell you about velocity? Do you think that means it would stay the same? He says if the velocity is constant, it wouldn't be speeding up or slowing down. Could that explain if it's equally spaced? Well, that's enough thinking. Are you guys still committing in your head? Give me a sign. Okay. Okay, let's do it. See, Galileo, he was one of these. A lot of people theorized about gravity and free fall and acceleration. You know, he just went and did an experiment and said, well, look. <laughs> See, sometimes experiment can explain things that you could think till you're blue in the face. There's theoretical physics and there's experimental physics. Both have their place. Both have uh, helped the other one. But sometimes you just got to do it <laughs> to, to make sense of it. So, starting at the beginning. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006. You get the idea. You know, in my nifty difty little markers here. One, two, time three. You know what? Let's do it this way. After one second, after two seconds, after three seconds, after four seconds, after five seconds, and you guys observe. Yeah, your gut was right. Yeah, it's, it's changing a certain distance in the same time interval. I'm going to look at this one, distance and time. When this one changes, every second, the same amount. So this value is staying constant. It has a velocity, but it's a constant velocity. And that's why it covers the same amount of ground every second. With me? So what's this cart? Acceleration. Zero. He's not accelerating. He's maintaining a constant velocity. There's a question? It's like a point of rest, though. You'll notice where he gets to a point of rest. So I guess that if you get to the zero and the one, it should be a little bit bigger than the rest. If we could shorten up, good point. If we could shorten up our time scale a lot, yeah. yes. Excellent observation. This starts at zero velocity. It gets up to this constant velocity. That's a change. So at the very, very, very beginning, there is an acceleration. Absolutely. But it happens like, you know, about that far. So I, I can't measure it with this setup. But very good. Yes? Right. Good question. Is it possible to change acceleration? Well, I'm going to pause there. Well, absolutely. If the velocity is changing, you'll have a constant acceleration. That's the only way to have acceleration. If the velocity is not changing, this is zero, isn't it? There's no acceleration. But you could have acceleration changing. We don't cover that. And you, this is one of the few terms where they had fun, I guess. A change in acceleration with time is called jerk. Use that one next time you're dealing with somebody that's a jerk. <laughs> Your acceleration's changing. They won't know you just call them a jerk. <laughs> but your question specifically was, can you be changing this without changing this? No. Because if this isn't changing, you don't have that. And so it's not changing either. It's constant, constantly zero. Correct. In order for this to change, this would have to be changing also. Uh, more. Not linearly. It would have to be growing at 
exponentially or to, to some power. For example, gravity, we discussed, is a constant acceleration of 10 meters per second every second. So every second, the velocity increases or changes by 10 meters per second. We started that. When you drop the ball, for the first second, let's see, let's do, uh, I'm going to get to this anyway. So it's position, uh, time, velocity, um, so if we start at zero points, after one second it's going how fast? That's right, 10 meters per second, because it's changed 10 meters a second every second. And the second second, after two, it'll be going how fast? It'll change to an additional 10. 10 between here and here, so 20. After three seconds, 30. Do you see how the, ch the interval, though, is constant? That's telling, the acceleration's constant. Gravity is constant. If for some reason, it went like this, 0, 10, 30, 50, 100, 1,000. Now the interval's changing. It's not linear, and the acceleration would be changing also. We rarely have to deal with any situations like that in practical life. What's the maximum The maximum free? Yeah, and we're going to get to that either by the end of this lecture or the beginning of next. It's the terminal velocity thing. It depends on the object that's falling. Uh oh, we'll, we will cover that. If it could just keep going forever and nothing would ever slow it down, it would just keep getting faster and faster and faster and faster forever. If there was nothing to hinder it. Right, no atmosphere. Did I hear another question? I, yeah, homework question. Let's see if my example covers this. If you throw a ball up, it needs some initial velocity to get going upward, right? Let's say it's 10 meters per second, right? And we'll just upward. 1,001, 1,002. That's about right, too. 1,001, 1,002. Took about two seconds for the trip, about one second up and one second down. Think of it from the top. At the top, what's its velocity? Right at the top. Yeah, it's instantaneous velocity, zero meters per second. Because it, it, it's changing direction, so it goes through zero. That's like this, it starts at zero. And it fell for one second. So how fast is it when it gets back to my hand? If it starts at zero at the top, falls for one second, how fast? How much will its velocity have changed in that one second? 10 meters per second. So I needed 10 meters per second to get it up that high in a second, to go from 10 meters per second to zero. It's the same change, just in the opposite direction. 1,001, 1,002. Second up, second down. Change 10 meters per second up, change 10 meters per second down. On the way up, the acceleration of gravity is down, slowing it down. On the way down, it's still down. We don't change the earth, and it speeds it up. Even at the top, it still has the acceleration. My point here is, when you throw something up, however high you throw it, the velocity initially upwards is ideally the same velocity downward at the same height. And then it'll, it'll, if it keeps falling, It'll pick up even more speed. So if you throw something up first and then let it drop down off the cliff, it'd be the same thing as you could throw it up with 10 meters per second or you could throw it down with 10 meters per second. It's already coming down at 10 meters per second, though, if you do this. Whoosh. 
So it would be the same. Yeah, if you throw it up at 10 meters per second, 1,001, 1,002. It's going 10 meters per second right here. So if I just let it keep going, it's the same thing as me throwing it down at 10 meters per second. Clever, huh? And some of these problems you're going to have to, they aren't just, oh, what do we memorize? What's that definition? Did he just tell us the answer? I'm trying to give you information so you can think for yourselves. Most of these questions in this course, I'm sorry, you're going to have to think. Do a little processing. Most won't be just memorization. Oh, what was that value for this pro answer? I don't know. So if you get stuck, yeah, pause. Try to put the pieces together. Again, so while, when we're discussing things and you read things, try to uh, build on a scaffolding up, build upon what you already know, so you can make those connections. Start being observant in the real world, at least this semester, <laughs> and you'll be surprised how much physics you recognize out there. Let's do a different one. This time I'll just do it, and we'll make some uh, comments. This is a fan cart. It's run by batteries also. So it pushes the air that way. I'm going to turn it on. And 1,001, 1,002, 1,000. You know, and it worked this morning back behind the... <laughs> I think that it's just not making connection. I hope that's it. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. You can tell already there's a little more error in that one, right? <laughs> but it proves the point. After one second, after two seconds, three, four, five. What do you know? It's accelerating. Bingo. Because we're seeing the position change with time. This keeps getting bigger for every unit of time. That means this isn't constant. Velocity is not constant. It's changing, so there's an acceleration. And it's a constant acceleration. And that's because this applies a force, a constant force, propelling the cart. And remember Newton's second law? Or, if you apply a force to a mass, it accelerates. So it's a constant force, it's a constant acceleration. And so you can see that. We don't even have to graph this. This one wouldn't be linear. It wouldn't be a straight line. It would kind of curve as it got faster and faster and faster. And somebody's gut was right. If we had a longer table, you would notice that eventually the space would start being constant. Why? If I just kept that fan cart going and kept doing it, eventually we would see the velocity stay constant. Why do you think that would be? There is a limit of acceleration because it's providing a constant force. That doesn't change. But at some point, it doesn't, uh, that's not enough to make it go faster and faster and faster. If nothing else was happening and you only applied that force, it should get faster and faster and faster forever. Thus, what do you think is happening? Air resistance. You both said the same thing. Air resistance, in this case. More generically, something must be retarding it, right? Pushing back. The faster you go, the more drag there is. And at some point, the cart's trying to go that way, and the air is trying to push it back, friction. And at some point, they balance. And what do we call this state? Equilibrium. Or specifically, where's Laura? Dynamic equilibrium. The net force is now zero, which means the acceleration is now zero, which means the velocity is now constant. We call that terminal velocity. So again, something can be moving 
at a constant speed even though forces are acting on it. That's this case, right? It's moving forward at a constant speed. It's in dynamic equilibrium. The force propelling the car forward from its engine, engine, <laughs> and whatever internal resistance it has. It's obviously not going faster and faster, so it's in equilibrium also. When something's in equilibrium, it's not accelerating. Most of you probably know that more from uh, falling things. That's what this one's about. Friction is one of those retarding forces. And air resistance causes retarding motion. So, helps if you plug it in, doesn't it? Anybody ever Googled on YouTube? YouTube's great now, you know, you can see everything. Uh, when the astronaut drops a hammer and a falcon feather on the moon. Why did they do that on the moon, you think? Yeah, there's, there's very, very, very little atmosphere there. So they got rid of air and air resistance. If you get rid of that retarding force, then there's no, nothing to slow things down. So I'm taking a feather and a ball, and I'm going to get rid of the air. This is a vacuum pump on my right. Careful, so I don't knock them off. Start pumping. And now we wait. So I'm removing the air inside the the, that. <laughs> I have an electromagnet. I'll flip the switch. It'll release them simultaneously. They'll both start with zero velocity. You know what happens if you drop a feather out here, right? So you get rid of the air. Have you ever seen a feather fall without air resistance? You have? You've done this before? Weird things, trying to photograph it. Gotcha. Well, today's your day if you haven't. That's long enough. All right, you ready? Let's see if I've been lying to you here. Watch over here. It happens quickly, right? This is um, probably less than a second. One, two, three. They did land at the same time. All things fall at the same rate. They better, that's Newton's, or that's what gravity is. 10 meters per second every second. Everything is pulled downward at that rate. That's the reason we usually don't see that is because of air resistance. This is my favorite part, right? That sound. <laughs> So, you know, just in case you think it's a magic feather, you ready? <laughs> yeah, the ball wins. And it's not because they fall at different rates. I mean, th that they're not trying to be accelerated at the same rate. But this one gets retarded more by air resistance. Weight has nothing to do with it. For the acceleration due to gravity, they were the, those are completely different weights, and yet they still, without air resistance, fall at the same rate. Here's a way you can do that at home. You can take a book, you know, it falls. I know, it's a good use of a physics book. And if you take a piece of paper, that one goes more slowly. This and the feather reach terminal velocity, like the fan cart. There's a force pulling them down, Earth, gravity. But this one feels more air resistance, so it slows it down. you got the two arrows balancing, and it reaches terminal velocity. Terminal velocity, constant velocity. And so the net acceleration on this, after it falls a real short distance, like right now, is zero. 
the net acceleration on that zero when it reaches terminal velocity, it's now in equilibrium. The two forces are balanced. You, that would happen to you if you jumped out of an airplane. You'd, you'd go faster, 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 but at some point you would start, you wouldn't be going any more faster. I know, that's bad English. Because you'd reach terminal velocity where your weight is countered by air resistance. And once this increases enough that they're equal, you will not go any faster because your velocity is no longer changing. You're still falling fast, but ter at terminal velocity. Yeah, it keeps changing. It reaches terminal velocity, and then it kind of, oop, a little off, and back, and off, and back. And yeah, because of the little flutter thing. There's a way to get around this. You don't need a vacuum. There's a lot less air resistance now, right? <laughs> a lot closer. Here's another way to do it. Let's block the air from being able to get to it, right? Or it gets to it, but it can't slow it down, right? Yeah, they felt the same, right? You think that's cheating? Let's put it on the top. The air still can't hit the paper, right? So they fall together because it's blocking the air. So all things fall at the same rate. Remember that, at the same rate. Acceleration due to gravity is constant. That doesn't change, but the net acceleration on an object can change when you put in friction and air resistance. There's a difference between uh, mass and weight. I mean, yeah, that's right. It's another um, confusion. You've already been exposed to this. Here's that second, Newton's second law. If we do it, we take our mass and we accelerate on the surface of the earth at 10 meters per second per second, gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, then we call this force our weight. If you haven't picked up on this, weight is a force. Uh, you've seen this in your book or by now, that's measured in Newtons. If you haven't read the book and learned what that was, mass is measured in kilograms, standard units. So I'm trying to emphasize there's a difference between mass and weight. If you went to the moon, would your weight change? Who said that? You said yes? You're right. <laughs> But why is your weight different? Less gravity. You're being accelerated at a different rate. Yeah, so when you step on a bathroom scale, it says you weigh less. Is your mass different on the moon? No, you're the same person. You're made up of the same stuff, so your mass doesn't change. But your weight can, because that's how your mass is being accelerated. Here's a way to show that. Now, this is a lead ball. This is my uh, safety line, the brown string. But here's some white string, cotton string. It's hanging. I got one on the top and one at the bottom. If I pull slowly on this downward, which string do you think will break first? I heard the bottom and the top. Somebody break the tie. Two for the bottom. I'm going to pull slowly. Ready? Here it goes. It was the top. Oh. But let's do it a, a different way. I'll set it up the same way, but, oh, really? Fine. Thought I had another short one. It's the same type of string. Hang that one, we'll just use this long one at the bottom. Okay, now, <laughs> I need more room. Okay, we got this string supporting it, and down here, I pulled slowly first. Now I'm going to go quickly. Ready? The bottom broke. 
Why the difference? Your clue is it has to do with the difference between mass and weight. And Newton's first law. That's your clue. Think about that. It's very similar to the tablecloth experiment. Yeah. So when you pour slowly, you increase the weight. Very good. It usually takes people longer. <laughs> when I pull slowly, this string is supporting the weight of the ball, correct? Mm -hmm. When I pull slowly, I'm adding, it's like I'm adding more weight, right? Because I'm, you have this force down and my force down, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, at some point, the string can't, can only support so much. So when I go over that, it breaks. It's like changing the ball's weight. Very good. So how about when the bottom breaks? The mass of my hand is accelerating faster, so it weighs more than the weight. I'm processing. <laughs> Most of that's good, what you said. But it, that would add, a, and that's another force down. It should be adding to this too, and it shouldn't be able to support that. It doesn't completely explain why, though, it breaks down here first instead of up there. Yeah, if I keep pulling, as you saw the first time, that's why it broke. This one, obviously, this couldn't support some force, the force of me jerking. But why did it break here instead of up here? Because up here, it, was, it had to support my force and this guy's force. There you go. Inertia. The ball is resisting change. Back to the tablecloth. This is very massive has a lot of inertia, thus a lot of resistance to change. So if I can do it quickly enough, I can ex exceed the force, breaking force of the string down here before I cause this to move and add to its weight. You follow that? Maybe this will help then when you're trying to remember the difference between force and mass. Mass is that resistance to change. The property of matter. And the more mass you have, the more inertia you have. Weight is that mass trying to be accelerated. You're trying to change. It's the force needed or applied to make that change. So if I took this ball out into space and went like this, it would be just as hard as it is right now because of its inertia. Right now it's heavy because it's being accelerated down, and so I can feel it, the heft. That's mostly because of its weight. You know, just holding it, I have to support. That's weight. But doing this, just moving it sideways, sure, I'm still holding it up. But the force needed to move it sideways, that's because of its inertia trying to resist me. And that'd be the same out in space as it would be right here. That's the difference. Okay, now, you kind of saw this idea. Let's add another one. You need another equation, another guide to our thinking. The fan cart that was accelerating had a, was changing its velocity. Free fall, when things are in free fall, they're, they're just falling. Whee, we don't have to worry about air resistance. But the acceleration's constant. We know what it is. The acceleration is G. So I'm, I'm often curious, OK, great. This was easy for me. I hope it is for you. But you can predict the, the position of the ball also, or an object. How far has it fallen after one second? There's an easy way and a hard way, and I'm going to tell you both. And right now it's the easy, because I haven't told you the hard way. <laughs> so it starts at zero, point zero at time zero, not moving. After one second, we know it's going that fast. 
Let's see, what we got thus far, this is how I can reason things through. I don't know, well, what do I know? Let's see. We're talking about distance, you know, well, here's one. All right, we started out at zero velocity, and we ended up at 10 meters per second. That took a second. So how far did we go? If we, were, if we were traveling at whatever velocity it was going at that first second, we could multiply it by a second. You can rearrange this one. The change in position, you know, the distance, is velocity times time. That's that, that rearranged. So we would know how far it's going if we knew its velocity times the time it took. Any thoughts yet? We know the time, yeah. I hope it's just the velocity that's confusing you. Well, good, I was waiting for somebody to say that. It seems like it would be 10 meters per second. Oh, nip it in the bud. That's incorrect. That's how fast it's going at the end. How fast was it going at the beginning? Zero. So how fast was it going in between? It was changing. That's the whole point. That's why it's accelerating. So what value do we use? We can't use an instantaneous velocity. We could use an average velocity. What do you think the average velocity is? If it started at zero and ends up at five? <laughs> Ten. <laughs> five. So on average, it was going five meters per second. It would travel the same distance going five meters per second always as it does starting at zero and ending at 10. Because initially it wouldn't travel as far, but at the end it would travel further. If you were going five meters per second the whole time on average, you'd cover the same distance. Do you see that? So we, we implore here average velocity. Between zero and 10, the average velocity is five. For one second, right? So how far did we go? See how the seconds cancel too? And it just leaves you with five meters. So you automatic, I'll just do it this way. This is in meters. Anything without significant air resistance, so in free fall, after one second, 1,001. Well, that was too short. <laughs> you know what I mean, drop it. 1,001, it'll be five meters below where you dropped it from, ideally. Do the second one. After another second, how much, where's it at now? I heard a 30. What's the average velocity between this, in the second second, for that second second? 15. It starts at 10, ends at 20. So on average, it's going 15 meters per second for that second. If you go 15 meters per second for one second, how far did you go? 15. 15 in that second. How far did we go the first second? Five. So you add five and 15, and now you're at 20 meters. So you, you dropped five here, you went 15 more that second. What's the average for the next second? 25, and we're going to go 25 meters per second for a second. So how far did you go? 25 meters in that second. Let's add that to where, how far we've already gone. And another one, 35 meters per second is the average. So we'll go 35 meters for that second. Add that to 45 and you get so you can see the position getting further and further and further, just like the points with the fan cart. It was a constant acceleration. So is gravity, constant acceleration. So what they learned was that distance is proportional to the time it's falling, but it's not directly proportional. Every second, the distance is further and further. They saw that it was proportional to time squared. Galileo figured this out. He slowed it down by doing things on a ramp. 
it's still being accelerated downward and it gets faster and faster, but it does it at a slower rate so he could monitor it easier than just dropping things. This is exact, he then found the uh, constant of proportionality here and found out it's exactly equal to one half a t squared. And this will be another one that's your friend. So this is a guide to thinking. Position is proportional to the time squared. And it also depends on gravity. So I use this one. You, can, you want to know how deep a well is? <coughs> Drop a stone into it and, and time how long it takes to hit the bottom. I uh, tried this when my uh, sister-in-law spit her gum off the uh, San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge, which is illegal, by the way. Shame on you, Emma, unless she ever watches this. But she already knew that. <laughs> I didn't realize she did it until after she did it. I'm like, oh, come on, well, if you're going to do it, let's time it. I know, I'm a nerd. <laughs> so we did. And I don't remember the values now, but let's say it took four seconds. I don't remember. You know, it's starting off at zero velocity, and it takes four seconds. How far did it fall? You can even do this one in your head. What's gravity? The acceleration in this case is gravity. It's 10. A half a 10 is 5, right? Okay, we got 5 over here. What's 4 seconds squared? 16. What's 16 times 5? For those of you that can't do it in your head, 16 times 5, 30, 80. Oh, what do you know? We're 80 meters up. That's simple. I, I think that's cool. <laughs> you could time how long it takes for something to go up or down and know approximate the distance that way. Well, we didn't make it to the clicker questions, but that's okay. I can give them to you next time. Let's see if I left out anything crucial for you to get for homework. No, we, we finished three. I got into four. Actually, we've essentially touched on everything now in four, but we'll go over it some more next week. Any last-minute questions? Yeah, the, um, the lecture right before the exam, I save for review. For catch-up, if I didn't finish something, but mostly review so we can go over things. You can ask me questions from homework. Yeah. Monday, February 2nd is your first exam. Is your first exam, yes. <laughs>